Hello guys, my name is Simgad, and today I'll be doing a review on the IS-3, a Tier 8 Russian heavy tank. This tank is one of the best tanks out there at Tier 8. Why? Well, overall, this tank is just a beast. Gun, armor, mobility, pretty much everything is amazing on this tank. It really is. Some people dislike this tank, I can understand that not everybody has this playstyle, but 90% of the people do really like this tank, and if you don't have this tank yet, get this tank. And I will show you why you should get this tank. First thing, it has 1,500 hit points, and that's average, nothing really special about that. The tank weighs almost 50 tons, that's pretty damn heavy for a tier 8 heavy tank. The engine power is pretty damn good, 700 horsepower, that is really really good for a tier 8 heavy tank. Your speed limit is 38. Again, that's good for a heavy tank. You, like, if it's around 40 speed limit, that's more than enough for a heavy tank. You, you really don't need more than that. Your traverse speed is 30. Again, that's also very good in a heavy tank. Usually, heavy tanks have around like 20, um, 20 to 25 traverse speed. Sometimes they have 30, but I don't really see much 30 traverse speed on my heavy tanks. Then we have the whole lot. The whole armor. Uh, 110 in the front, 90 in the side, and 60 in the back. Um, also, guys, it's pretty damn good angled armor, so you can see it's a pointy. Armor means don't side scrape. If you side scrape, just imagine this being a wall here, okay? If you side scrape, your armor just gets easier to pen, as you can see. If you keep your frontal armor to the enemy like that, you're gonna usually bounce a shot. But at some point, I do side scrape with this tank, and it sometimes does really work. It just depends on where the enemy really shoots you. But remember, if you side scrape, you're making your armor flat, means they can easily pen you if you do that. Your turret armor is 250 on the turret in the front, 172 on the side, and 100 in the back. Also, let's jump over to Tank Inspector and look closely at the armor. So, here is the Iron Street. As you can see, it has pretty damn good overall armor. Um, I don't really like the armor for only one reason, and it's the top. Usually if you meet an experienced player, and you're like hold down completely, then they usually can still pen you on top here. Why? Well, look at this. It's 34 penetration, and it's not a ricochet. If people hit you up there, it's an immediate pen. It's just really, really... It's like a cheeky little weak spot. Not much people actually know about this weak spot. But if you shoot up there, it's pretty much guaranteed pen. Like, you're not gonna bounce that. It's just a guaranteed pen. Like, if you have a low penetration gun, like a, a Super Persian gun, and you cannot pen his lower plates, then just go for the top. You can easily pen the top up there. Like, 34 meters of armor. That's pretty much nothing on a heavy tank. And believe me, that spot works. And most of you guys do know that. That spot works pretty damn good. Like, you can also go for the commander edge, but just... To be completely honest, just go up here, and you're gonna pen that without any problems. It is hard to hit, though. That is true. But if you're if you have a low penetrating gun, just go for that because you're gonna pretty much pen that every freaking time. And that's one of the reasons why I dislike the IS3 a little bit. But for the rest, I really enjoy the IS3 mobility, gun, armor, pretty damn good, ex except for the top up here. But it's understandable because it does need weak spots. Not much people actually know about that weak spot, but if you meet like amazing players and yeah you're pretty much fucked armor in general pretty damn good lower plates look at that 250 that is really really good armor on your lower plates people don't really shoot you down there usually they shoot you up here 170 in the front as you can see and there's if you angle as you can see just imagine here being a wall look at that your armor just gets worse it's 150 up here and if you if you face your enemy frontally Without angling your armor, your armor increases. Look at that, 160. So, my advice is don't side scrape around buildings. You can try doing it. I've done it a lot of times. Usually people don't really shoot me in the hole. Usually they bounce me somehow. But, to be completely honest, just don't try side scraping. It doesn't always work with Russian tanks. So third armor, pretty damn good compared to the top, as I said before. Everything ever like the cheeks, like the cheeks are pretty damn good armored as well. Watch out for the Artie, as usual. Um, nothing in the back. If Artie hits you in the back, it's gonna do full damage pretty much every time. Same thing for the top, only 20. It's really easy, penable. Sides on the ice street, um, they're pretty good because. 
this part is uh, spaced armor, if I'm correct. So some guns that go through it, they pen you, but they don't do any damage. And that's one of the good things about the ice tree. If you have, if you meet the ice tree in a battle and he's not facing you, try to go right here between that. Don't go up here because that is just risky. Believe me, I, like some, like the I-7 has the same same thing pretty much. If you go to the I-7. Also, spaced armor right here. If you shoot him in here, you're gonna pretty much bounce. And why? Because I've done like object zone of four shots, uh, some Yak Panzer shots that went into the spaced armor, and it didn't never pen it. It's the same thing with the I-3, except it's a it's a little bit um, less, of course, because it's a tier eight thing. But then again, just don't shoot it in the spaced armor. Just go right here between this. You can shoot the tracks. The tracks also are possible. Don't shoot here or here. Just shoot between this area and you're gonna pen the tank pretty much every time back um pretty good armor 80 that's actually pretty damn good means each chance can really pen you so that's really good and yeah that's pretty much a tank a pretty good tank the gun impression again non-existent it's a russian tank it's a, it has a little bit of gun impression that's pretty much it not more than that uh, but yeah, that's pretty much Russian tanks for you. Russian tanks don't really have gun depression whatsoever. And gun elevation is pretty good. It's not too bad. But yeah, that's pretty much the armor in Tank Inspector. Let's jump over back to the garage. So that was the armor on the IS-3. Pretty good. It's not too bad. Pretty damn average, except for the top. As I said before, it sucks. But hey, that's the only weak spot on this tank. Um, The gun. This is the amazing part about this tank, is the gun. It's not the best gun out there, 225 penetration, that's pretty good for tier 9s and tier 8s. Tier 10s, you're not going to pen them that easy though. Uh, E100s, uh, E3s, mouses, you, you need to spam gold against those guys because 225 pen isn't really enough for those guys. Average damage is 390, that's pretty damn good. Average, uh, you don't really need more than that. Dispersion or accuracy is 0 0.4, uh, means you cannot really snipe, you need to be the first line. Uh, it's pretty much a first line tank. You cannot be a second line tank. You're not made for supporting or sniping. You're made for being in the front, taking shots, and dealing out damage. That's how you play this tank. And also, the aiming time really does suck. That's why you need to be in the front with this tank. You cannot be in the back. 3.4 3 aiming time. I think the Death Star even has better aiming time than this tank. Let me actually check. I'm not sure about that. Oh no, the Death Star and the IS-3 have the same aiming time. So yeah, it pretty much shows you how bad the aiming time is on the IS-3. So don't, don't try to snipe with this tank, it's not going to really work for you. Uh, and rate of fire, 4.5 rounds per minute, that's also pretty good, means you're going to be reloaded every 11.5 seconds. And that's uh, not too long reload time, that's pretty good, that's pretty damn average. Um, and yeah, it doesn't really need a buff or a nerf, for me it's perfect. The third traverse speed is 26. That's pretty damn good. Well, it's not that good compared to the traverse speed on the tracks. Like, if it was around 30, it would be better. But 26 is also pretty good because you can turn with your tank and with your turret at the same time. So you can pretty much intercept every light tank or medium tank that is actually trying to circle you. Your free range is bad because it is a Russian tank. And Russian tanks usually have a bad free range. 385 free range is pretty damn shit for... A tier 8 tank. Um, I like having around 400 view range at tier 8. I don't know, at least like something around that. I'm if if it has something around that, I'm happy. But 385 isn't. It's it's average. It isn't really amazing, but it isn't really that bad. Your single range is 761. Again, that's pretty good. Nothing really special about that. And yeah, let's just jump over to the equipment. So, the first thing we have is gun rammer because gun rammer is really really important on pretty much every tank that does not that does not have an unloading system. Uh vertical stabilizer again important not for every player that plays um this tank, but for me, the vertical stabilizer is very important because I do play this tank aggressive and I like shooting on the move, so vertical stabilizer does really help me. And the third thing I have is optics. Optics uh, is pretty good. Like you can go for fence. That's actually the first tank that I actually use optics uh, before fence because because I usually use fence. I like fence, but 
as you guys saw, the fuel range is terrible on this tank, so that's why I'm trying to improve the fuel range little by little, and having f optics does really help me. I like if if my fuel range was better, I would be able to put on my fans, but the fuel range is just so terrible on this tank. It really is. So the skills, um, as you can see, the first skill I got is repairs because you are a heavy tank, and being tracked in the open isn't really a good option. That's why I have the repairs as first. Then second thing you really need on this tank is uh, six cents. I forgot about six cents. I have mentor first, but six cents is more important than mentor. And safe storage as well, very important. The rest is all up to you. It's, it depends on how you play your tank. But for me, repairs, six cents, and safe storage, those are the most important skills on this tank. But yeah, that's pretty much the tank on stats. I have three games ready, so let's jump over to the first one. So here is the first game. As you can see, I'm playing on Runeberg on Fire. It's standard battle. Uh, pretty damn good matchup. Um, I really enjoy playing this tank in tier eights. Against tier tens, I really do not like this tank. Against tier nines, it's this tank still works, but against tier tens, it's just like it feels like I'm playing um, an SP in a tier ten matchup. Pretty much, it's just terrible. I really dislike it. But yeah, I got into a good matchup here, tier 8. As usually, I'm going to the normal spots, and that's the city. Uh, going with the heavy tank on the right side isn't really a good option. The right side is more meat for the medium tanks and the scouts. And of course, some TDs that can camp in the back right here. But heavy tanks should always go down this area. Down here, down here, it doesn't really matter, you need to go in the city because the city is very important is because well this map is encounter so you need to defend the cap and that's what I'm doing right now I am going to the position where I can actually defend first shot sadly I completely missed that on the AMX didn't really aim lot enough as I said before the aiming time does really suck on this thing 3.4 seconds so it does really suck second shot does work out 452 damage a really nice high roll on the T71 and I start side scraping here. Two shots received from two heavy tanks and they both bounced me. Why? Well, this is really not a weak spot right here. If I'm showing this, if somebody's showing this with the IS3, don't shoot him down there. It's pretty much an auto bounce even if you go through it. Don't ever try shooting down there because you will just track him and do no damage. And that's how you can side scrape. But if you're showing a little bit too much, when you're showing this part, then yeah, you're pretty much fucked. Then they can they can pen you them pretty damn easy from there. Second shot into the T34, 388 damage, a pretty good roll. Sadly below average, but hey, it's a pen, so can't really be too mad. At this point, I'm just trying to do as much damage as I can. 374 damage. IS3 is taking a lot of hits. He's a, a one shot now. He's playing a bit too aggressive with his tank. And I realize he's a one shot, so I'm not really being scared of him. I also realized the 39th was pushing on the left side, means I can just go in there and push on the ice tree. I shoot him, but suddenly my shot was a low roll, and he gets kill steal by the 112. The other four forgot about me, so hey, free damage is free damage. Put a side shot into him, 389 damage, a pretty good roll. Again, below, la below average, but hey, doesn't really matter. Panther not looking this way means free shot at him as well. Sadly, the 112 shot him before I could shoot him, so I got the kill. Didn't really want the kill, I wanted the damage. But hey, kill is a kill. Uh, as you guys know me, I don't really care about how much kills I got. It's all about the damage for me. Put a shot at the D34. And yeah, the city is being heavily attacked. At this point, I realize it's only a KV3 and an IS. And I'm showing my track so you can track them because I know he's not going to pen me. So I'm not really being scared of this KV train. I realize there's pretty much nobody on um, this side of the map. It means I can just easily side trip here without getting shot on my side. At this point I realize KV tree is a one shot. No point of being scared. Again, as you can see, I don't really care about T kills. I care about the damage. That's why I went for that IS shot. This KV tree is not getting killed, so I'm trying to ram him, but sadly I do not weigh enough. Again, I go for the IS, but sadly I hit the gun instead. And at that point, as you guys saw, the KV3 actually penned me twice. So you can argue about taking out the gun. 
and, and having the kill, but I just wanted the damage. I don't really care much about the kills. But at that point, I did really need to take that guy out because he was penning me way, way too easy. There we go. A nice shot into the IS. He is a one shot now. 12 HP left. And at this point, again, I don't really care about the IS. He is now dead, so I can just push up on this Panther M10. That guy can't really do much much against me because he has a pretty bad gun. Well, it's not too bad, but it's not too good either. Take a shot on the move. Sadly, completely missed that. Really getting lucky with that. And at this point, it's a Churchill gun carry, IS, AMX, and a Panther AIM-10. Somehow, I bounced the second shot. He, he did came out of no nowhere f uh, for me there, and I didn't really expect him to actually aim this way. I really got lucky with that second bounce on him. There we go, 350 damage against that Panzer M10. And yeah, it's pretty much clean up at this point. A poor Churchill gun carrier. I'm surprised people are even playing that line. The Churchill gun carrier is just so, so bad. And yet, here we go. There is the final blow. So that was the first game. Let's jump over to the after battle reports. So here are the after battle reports. You can see I got Ace Tanker. Spartan and high caliber a pretty damn good game 2136 yeah 30 no 63 XP uh, and yeah pretty good game 1.4 K base XP 16 shots fired 14 hits missed twice bounce once and with 30 penetrating shots added 4747 damage received seven nine hits uh, seven of them were penetrations but penetrations also mean uh, when people track you so then they actually pen me like only four or five times. I think it was four times, and the rest was tracks pretty much. And uh, blo blocked 1,000 damage by my armor. So I did block some da some shots, but usually you you cannot really block much with the ice cream. Spot a tree, damage five, and destroy it four. Pretty damn good game. And uh, didn't really make too much credits. 20k profit. But then again, I'm a, I'm a, the ammo cost did cost me a lot. Then the consumables. I probably used a large repair kit, so that's 20k again. And repairs for the IS-3, 11k, so yeah, didn't really make much credits, but I had a pretty damn good game, so can't really be too mad about that. So, that was the first game, let's jump over to the second game. So, here is the second game, as you can see, I'm playing on Mountain Pass. I'm not a big fan of this map, uh, because... Well, the, the map is normal, I guess. Uh, I only like this side of the map. Uh, the um, bridge up here and the right side, I really not enjoy. Uh, they're not really made for me. I pretty much have never been here in my 33,000 games. For the bridge, I've been here a couple of times with my TDs, but usually I go down this area. and Or I snipe from here, or I push down this area. It's usually how I play this map with pretty much all of my tanks, CDs, heavy tanks, medium tanks, light tanks, because I don't really like this map too much, so I only like this area of the map. Again, matchup, pretty damn good, tier 8 only, only 4 heavy tanks and 1 tier 8 arty, but the tier 8 arty cannot really shoot me from the position where I'm gonna go in, so I'm not really scared of him. Also, the IS-6 is on this side, means there is 1 tier 8 less going this way, so that's also good. And I'm not sure where the whole team is going to, but I know there's a Nasu here in the middle, and I want to shoot him really badly. He shoots, kills the small term, poor guy. I aim for him. He goes back a little bit too far. Shoot him straight in the cheek. 470 damage. Already getting lucky with that high roll. T32, T32 shows up as well. He's in a very good position, a really good hold down position, that guy. And I know I cannot really go really against him, but he's backing up, so I know I can just push up and just go against the tier 6s up here. I'm not really scared of the tier 2 right now because tier 2 is more focusing on this AMX in my back, means I can focus on the guys in front of me. And I know the tier 6s and the tier 7s can't really do much against me, so pretty much free damage. Here I go. VK is backing up, but he cannot really do much. As, as you can see, he's, he's not even trying. Q1S, stupid move. Don't ever do that. If you want to back off, at least do it like this. Then you will not get shot by me. So that was bad play by him. 
I go for this K1S because he's more scary than that VK in the back. VK can barely pen me. K1S can put a shot into me, pretty much uh, get one fourth of my HP, so I don't really like that. There we go, shot from the T32. Sadly, I do a snapshot on the VK, but completely miss that, so I'm really kind of lucky with that. At this point, I'm just trying to kill this K1S because he is a one shot. There we go, we sh shoot him with Sally, we do a complete low roll, and at this point I realize I need to push up, I need to go somewhere where I can be even more aggressive. The other two is a one shot, so I'm not really scared of him, I'm trying to find a shot, but Sally he goes back in time, and I can really, I can really, I can really not shoot him right now. Uh, go for this VK instead, if VK pens me, I'm not sure where he actually penned me, oh right up there, yeah. This position is actually not always a pen. It's actually pretty damn hard to pen that position, but hey, that guy got really lucky with that shot. D32 and VK, and also a DB. Uh, I do want to kill this D32 really badly because he's a tier 8, so he's more important. If I, if I kill him, I will get more XP and more credits. There we go. We go for him, but sadly, we only track him. We really get unlucky with that. And at this point, it was pretty much game over for this side. It's only a VK and a DB left. VK is backing off. He misses. I put a nice shot into him. 397 damage. Above my average, so I'm not too mad. Yak Panther and Kionis and me are pushing through this area. Our team is still holding up. They just kind of have the right set. They're going to lose the right set in a little because they cannot really hold that. We aim, as you guys tell, that aiming time is really terrible in this thing. 3.4 seconds aiming time is really, really bad. That's why I need to be in the front pretty much always with this thing. Don't try sniping, guys. Just don't. I've pe I've seen people sniping with this tank, and it just pisses me off when I see that. It's This tank isn't made for sniping. This tank is purely made for being in the front and taking shots. We get a nice shot from that uh, souffle. He was using 12.8 guns. That's why we received 525 into our face. One third of my HP pretty much went away there. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but the good thing is his reload time is around 13 seconds, and he has no armor or speed. So hey, that guy could not really do much against us. At this point, uh, it doesn't look really good for us. They got the right side, they got the bridge, we got the left side, but that's pretty much it. Uh, the Artie's in the middle, I really want to kill this guy. Uh, and maybe spot the other guys that are actually pushing down there, the Luva, the VK, and the Hellcat. There you go, the VK gets spotted, I fall back where I'm hold down, aim for him, shoot. Somehow bounce, I have no idea how I bounce that, I already got unlucky with that. Um, Probably went into his... Yeah, I actually have no idea where I can actually bounce that guy, Pfft, I have no idea. Just very, very unlucky. So at this point I realized their team is probably going to push up do the cap completely and just cap win from us so I was like okay we need to completely fall back and defend and the good thing is my team actually also realized that the 110, the Yak Panther and the Kionis they're, they're all going back to base so nobody's going to the cap so good play by my team here really good play um, at this point I don't think they really can win against us because it's only an ISG and a Leuven um, and those guys can't really do much uh, against us. There we go, one guy is capping. And pretty much our whole team is going back. Yeah, P Panther went, went down here, as you can see. Not really sure why he did that, but okay. And there we go, the ice tree is full HP. Uh, I am two shots for this guy, or one shot if he gets lucky. Aim, but sadly, I bounce that completely. I really, really get unlucky with that. I'm not sure how I did that. Ice tree is not really focusing on me right now. He He's aiming for me right now. Shoots, but sadly misses. I bounce him, he bounces me. And if I'm correct, he actually hit this part. And as you can see, you can actually see the outline on this tank. This little part. Don't shoot at the tank around this area. Just don't, because you're going to bounce it. Up here, you can probably pen this, if I'm correct. You can pen this for sure. This part you can pen for sure. But this little part, do not shoot down there, guys, in the ice tree. Just don't. It's an auto-bounce pretty much every time. Hellcat gets spotted. Uh, I don't really care about him too much. I want to go for this ice tree. I need to kill this ice tree as fast as I can. He bounces. I pen. I'm not sure how he bounces. And the 110 is going straight into the cap and leaves me with this ice tree. And he, de he decaps and 
does save the camp there. I fall back, aim, shoots, and hit the guy right on time. M44 tries to support his Ashi, but sadly he misses and does not kill me. He only splashes me. And yeah, pretty much now it's clean up. It's only a Leve and an M44 left. Don't get me wrong, they can still win this. Leve can one shot me, M44 can one shot me. Um, the 110, the Kionis, and the Yak Panther. Yak Panther is a one shot, Kionis is a one shot. The 110 can actually, it's pretty much the only guy that can actually, that I'm actually sure of that we are going to win this game. I'm a one shot. Um, I can't really play too aggressive right now, but as you guys know me, <laughs> I don't care that I'm a one shot. And I'm just going to my usual positions. I want to go and try to get some payback on that arty. That's why I'm taking this shortest way possible. Uh, I was trying to actually flank the Leva. I thought he was like somewhere down here, just relaxing. But he, sadly, he was nowhere around here. So I was confused at that point. Like, where the hell is the Leva? I really have no idea. He probably fell back and went into defensive mode. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, means we can need to, we need to attack him so to, to win the game. And I'm not sure how much HP the guy has as well. So yeah, that's gonna really suck for me. And so yeah, as you can see, as you can see, K1S and Yank Panther and the Sen are going on the right side. Louis gets spotted. Um, he is pretty much full HP. I'm a one shot for him. And at this point, I'm just thinking, how can I go against this guy without losing? And the best way to go against this guy is tracking him. I track him. I fall back. There we go, he shoots me again, and if I'm correct, it was right here. Okay, it's not visible. Okay, yeah, it's now visible. There we go. Again, in this area, it's pretty much an auto bounce. Don't shoot the ice tree ever down there, guys. It's pretty much an auto bounce. Up here, you can. Down here, just don't. That's my biggest advice when you go against this tank. And there you go, the, uh, the liver completely fucked up. I know my real time it is faster than his. Put a shot into him. Sadly, I didn't really aim that well, and I completely bounced that. The Artie shoots me, but I really do not care about the Artie. Um, the Leve shot means I can just push up on him. I only got gold left at this point, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not firing gold because I'm a gold spamming bastard, but I have nothing else left in gold. And Leve misses means he's pretty much dead. Put a shot into him. M44 is somewhere up there. There we go. And he is pretty much dead as well. He has... He cannot really do much against me. And there we go. He gets killed by the K1S. And yeah. I pretty much just outplayed that Levu. Um, I really got lucky against the Levu at the point where he shot me and bounced. But yeah, at that point, guys, never shoot it. Uh, because he will bounce that pretty much every time. It's pretty much an auto, uh, auto bounce. But yeah, this was the second game. Let's jump over to the after battle reports. So, here are the after battle reports. You can see I got East Anchor, High Calibur, and Steel Wall. A pretty damn good game. Not too bad at all. 20 shots fired, 19 hits. So, I missed one and bounced three of my shots. And when you stick 16 penetrating shots, I did 5,000 and 4 damage. I received 14 hits, and 9 of them were non penetrations because people didn't really shoot me in the right positions. So, that was bad play by them. And I blocked as well 3,000 damage by my armor. So I had a pretty damn good game there, not too bad at all. Made 30, 35k profit again, not too bad. I did fire some gold at the end against the Leuven, but I had no EP left. And yeah, my 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 S3 is still uh, has a setup of uh, like a team battle tank or like a, how do you call that a tank company tank that's pretty much my setup that's why I have so much gold in that tank usually I forget to like change the ammo loadout but that's why I have so much gold in that tank because usually in tank companies you sometimes you need to have those shots that actually pen and don't have like the RNG bounce that's the only reason why I have so much gold in that tank but yeah usually I pretty much never use the gold because it really is not needed and then again Against your tens, you do need gold with the NS3 at some points, like the mouse or the uh, E3, if you ever meet those tanks and it's your 10 matchups. Those guys are really, really hard to pen. And that's why I got pretty much so much gold shots in my NS3. But really, it is not needed. Like, five gold shots, it's more than enough in the NS3. I just have a little bit more just for the occasions where I go in. And again, 11k repair. Um, 
if, if your tank actually gets killed in a battle, it's around 15 k to repair it, something around that. But yeah, a pretty damn good game, didn't play too bad as well, 1.5k basic XP, pretty damn good game. I can say I carried my team, but my team did play, again, very well. I was low HP pretty much for the whole game, so my team did um, kind of carry me in a way. The 110 played very well as well, so grants that again. The rest of my team played normal and meh, you know, not too good, but not too bad. But yeah, this was the second game. Let's jump over to the last game. So here is the third replay. As you can see, this replay is from the big boss. And uh, also, guys, if you have a replay for me, an amazing game or something like that, but it needs to be really, really amazing. And you will see in this matchup, he will do an amazing job in this tank. And if you have any replays, I will leave, I will leave uh, my email address in the description below so you can actually give me one of your epic replays. Also guys, I can only accept replays from 8.11 to 9.2 and nothing before that because I don't have the version of Roll Tanks from there so sadly I can only accept from 8.11 to 9.2 but yeah, the big bouncing, he's from the Cirque Clan 2 as you can see he's playing in his eyes stream the last third game and he had a pretty damn amazing game he's playing on and Northwest, as you can see right here, the matchup is pretty damn good. Only two tier nine tanks, and a lot, a lot of tier eight tanks. And I was actually thinking about this. I actually had this argument in my uh, stream the other day. Uh, what do you guys think about having only tier eight matchups or, or or only tier nine matchups? Because I just don't find it fair when you go with your I three against tier tens. I just don't see how that is fair, because you meet. Uh, like the Waffle Tractor, she meets the freaking Death Stars that can just one-shot you. I just don't see how that is fair. Like, I would also... That would be also awesome if they actually did, like, one tier higher. I would live with that as well, like, meeting, again, only tier 9 tanks, like... And no tier 10s. Like, pretty much, like, pre preferential matchmaking on the, um, premium tanks. Like, I would love to see that. Like, hopefully they can actually implant that one day, because... I would love to see something like that. And yeah, there we go. Three shots into the ice for you. One key damage so far. Kills that guy. And now you can flank the IS-6 and the 112. But yeah, hopefully one day they can actually implant something like this. I would love to see this because I just don't see how 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 fair this actually is when you go against uh, when you go with your IS-3 against mouses, E-3s. It's just not fair. Like against the uh, one of trees, um, IS-8s. That is That is kind of fair. That's not too bad. Like. Uh, but it's just not fair because they have the advantage because they have more armor, they have more HP, they have better guns than you, better DPM than you. I just I just don't see why that should be a thing. And yeah, 112 is attacking this Tiger one. Good thing the big Boston is looking this way and he's able to protect this guy. 112 somehow bounces the Tiger one, so good play by him there. Nice shot into his back there, 370 damage. Sadly, it's below average. Tiger 1 gets a big shot from the 112, and the big boss is able to finish him off right on time. There we go, 2200 damage so far, he's having a pretty damn good game, and also, as well, 2 kills. Apple Trigger is falling back, and he puts a nice shot into him, but he does sadly pay for it, it went straight into his upper plate. And Waffle Tractor can easily pen this guy without any problems whatsoever. As well, I'm actually surprised how his position worked here, because usually people are actually camping up there, and from there they can actually shoot you down here. At least when every time I actually go down this area, I always have this problem. Uh, that's why I usually push uh, down this way or down this way. And yeah, there you go. He bounces the one tree. Sadly, one tree is not really going for the big Boston. He's aiming for his weak spot. Sadly, he misses. Well, he does not miss, he bounces that. And as you can see on the map, they're, the enemy team is pretty much all in the middle. A big force of them. There we go. Aims for his weak spot, his lower plate, and there he goes. 2,900 damage and 3 kills so far. He's doing pretty good. His team, on the other hand, isn't playing that good. As you can see as well, good play by Dick Boston because he knows there's a Moffat Tractor up there, and he knows Ichi can easily go through him. There we go. 535 damage. 
good play by Big Boss in here. That is really, really good play. I like seeing people change their ammo when they meet people that actually don't have armor whatsoever. And that's really, really good play. Waffle Tractor misses, and he can now pretty much push up because Waffle Tractor is a one shot, and he cannot really one shot Big Boss. And he, actually, he can one shot him if he gets really lucky, but he's not really aiming for him at this point, and there he goes. Only an 8 to 15, and a VK in the middle. VK is pushing down. Sadly, he has a Chi, so he only does 133 damage. That was his only mistake, but he had a Chi loaded for that Waffle Tractor, but he died, so the, he didn't really reload back to EP. So that was the only bad play by Big Boston so far. 8 to 15 is a one shot, and it is a very important kill because he has DPM, and it's really hard to go against an ed 15 because that tank is pretty damn OP in some points. And yet, there we go. He kills that guy. 4 kills, 3,600 damage. He's doing pretty good so far. The enemy team is going for the camp. Um, not sure why they're doing that, but okay. Good thing uh, Big Boston's team is actually paying attention to the map, so they all fell back, and now they're able to defend that. They killed the T-69, and that's only super version and either 4-3. Big Boston is pre-aiming on the positions where he thinks the type of the animal will be. VK gets spotted. And he aims, he aims, and... There we go. He aims really long just to make sure that shot goes into that VK. And the child does do a lot of damage. 300 and... Well, not a lot of damage. It's below average damage again. But that's the ice gun for you. Not every time you will have your average damage. You will sometimes even get around 300 damage. And that is... Those shots are just so annoying, you have no idea. And yeah, right now it's pretty much clean up. VK is one shot. Um, the 4-3 is getting gang banned by three guys, so he cannot really do much, and there he goes. And now it's only a Yak Panther and a Waffle Tractor. No, Waffle Tractor, <laughs> never mind. And they're probably camping back in the base. Time 9 was doing something weird there. I have no idea what he was doing. I think he was stuck or something. I'm not sure. He bounces on Big Boss and he puts again a nice shot into him. Into his lower plates. And now he gets flying by this 9 and it's pretty much game over for that Time 9. He has 5 kills so far. One more kill and he will have Top Gun. Yak Panda 2. Wobble Tractor. Probably somewhere in base or maybe if K possible as well. Yak Panther's actually in E8, as you can see. Uh, he was around that area. Hopefully the team can actually fall back. The SP is actually paying attention, and he says affirmative, so he's going back to base. Same thing for the theater team. And yeah, and <laughs> the big boss is actually asking for the Tom Gun. I would probably do the same thing, because he, did, he does deserve his Tom Gun here. 16 shots, 5,000 damage, 5 kills. He did pretty much carry his team here. Yeah, but the two gets spotted, and he's just camping up there. Two to two in SP are trying to kill that guy, and there you go. The Borsik is actually AFK, and not really doing something. At this point, he's just waiting for the kill on this guy. There we go. Sadly, he gets super unlucky and actually somehow bounces him in the tracks. That was really, really just unlucky. Hopefully, Tiger One does not kill steal him here. And there we go. The sixth skill. Good play. Good play. So yeah, that was the third replay. Let's jump over to the after battle reports. So here's the after battle report. You can see he got a Sanker, high caliber, and Top Gun. A pretty damn good game here. 1650 basic speed. Amazing, amazing play. 21 shots fired, 20 hits, 1 miss, and 2 bounces. And with the 18 penetrating shots, he did 5,368 damage. He bounced one shot, the rest of them were penetrations. He didn't really receive too much shots, only four shots in this whole game. And he blocked 640 damage by his armor. Pretty damn good game here, and he also made 22k profit. He's actually playing with his normal account, not with his premium account. So again, respect for you, bro. Playing with a normal account, so I could never do it. I don't have any patience for it. I usually, I will if I ever do that, I will probably die out of having no patience because I'm just so used to having a premium account. I, I pretty much started from like when I had like around 5k games, I started using premium accounts, and from that point, I pretty much never stopped using it because I just realized how good the premium account was. And 
yeah, respect for you, bro, for actually not using a premium account. I could never handle it. That's too much for me. And also, great game. Thanks for sending me sending me the game in. I really appreciate that. Guys, again, I'm going to repeat this. If you have any good replays, send it to me. I will leave my email in the description below. Only replays from 8.11 to 9.2. No different replays, okay? Don't send me from 9.10 or 9.9. .9. Don't send me those replays. I'm not going to use them. Only from 9... No, from 8.11 to 9.2, okay? I only need those replays. But yeah, this was the review of the IS3... Uh, I just noticed my tab is still open of this sound. Uh, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> I was listening to that before I started this before I started this review. But as usual, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate that. If you really did enjoy this review, you can always leave a like, subscribe, and comment. But as usual, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.